Hi, I'm Tim Miner with Modern Stetter, and you're here at the Edible Learning Lab in Buffalo, Wyoming. Today we are making compost tea, and the entire goal of this uh, particular video is to show you how easy it is to extract the nutrients, bacteria, and fungi from worm castings in a worm farm that we have established right here in the lab. Uh, vermicast, as it's called, or worm castings, uh, the kids refer to it as worm poop, which is exactly what it is, is nutrient rich um, and is full of life. Uh, lots of beneficial bacteria and fungi. And we're gonna use this uh, tea process to extract as much of that uh, uh, nutrient and biological activity as we can to use in our raised planters. In a related video, we showed you how we actually harvested off those uh, worm castings. So if you wanna check that out to catch up, if you're just now seeing this video for the first time, we've already harvested some of the worm castings. And now we're gonna use the tools that you see in front of me here to, uh, to make an elixir, to extract as much of that stuff uh, as we can, the nutrients and the uh, active biota from the, uh, the castings so that we can use it as a soil drench in our raised planters and as a foliar spray in the Bright Agrotech farm wall plants. So we have three different sets of, of uh, tools here. All of our water uh, is tap water here in the lab. Uh, we don't have a, a rainwater source yet, um, though we do have a rain harvesting system on its way. So we actually have to treat the water that comes out of the tap. Uh, the city of Buffalo uses sodium hypochlorite uh, chlorine to uh, control bacteria in the water supply. So we need to neutralize that so that we're not killing off the bacteria that we want to be able to extract out of the, the compost. Uh, so we use ascorbic acid, uh, which is uh, more commonly referred to as vitamin C. We use a uh, food grade uh, that we actually get from a bodybuilding website uh, of all places. And uh, because it's an acid, it actually drops the pH of the water. So we'll use a little pH up to, uh, to bring that back up to somewhere in the neighborhood of a six and a half pH. Um, from there, uh, we'll actually uh, use uh, the harvested uh, castings from the worms, a little bit of molasses as a food source, and uh, some cheesecloth and a zip tie to be able to create a little sachet, if you will, um, to, uh, to hold on to this compost. And then a simple S-hook allows us to hang it here on the side of the bucket. An aeration pump and aeration stones will allow us to put uh, oxygen into the water and keep this brewing process um, in the aerobic state rather than the, uh, the anaerobic state. Um, once it goes anaerobic, we're gonna start to, to see those bad smells uh, uh, come off of the, uh, the batch and uh, it's also going to change the nature uh, of the tea itself. So we wanna be able to brew this in a way that we can keep it aerobic um, and then utilize it here in the lab as quickly as possible. Aerobic production includes, uh, in the decomposition process, it's either aerobic or anaerobic. Aerobic includes the, uh, the presence of oxygen. Um, if you think about it um, in terms of you know, normal decay, the forest floor, um, you have aerobic decomposition happening as the leaves and the grass die off each year and start to break down. Um, anaerobic is what you would see in the landfill. Um, that's usually known by the presence of the stronger smells. Um, it's also the absence of oxygen. Um, and that's the, the smelly decomposition that we don't want. Um, it changes the, the, the chemistry that, that happens inside, particularly here in our tea batch. It'll actually change um, some of the nutrient availability, um, certainly the smell, and uh, we'll have a, a different impact on our plants if we allow it to go anaerobic. So for the last year, we've been treating water and we've worked on our formula to where we've got it more or less down to a science. Um, we uh, use the ascorbic acid, the vitamin C, to instant, instantly neutralize the sodium hypochlorite. And we can actually do that with just a level quarter teaspoon uh, in the water. But now that's gonna drop our pH, which is coming out of the tap is about six and a half it's gonna drop it into the low fours uh, with just that small amount of ascorbic acid. So we actually utilize then uh, pH up as a way to counter that measure. And it doesn't take much. We use again, just a quarter teaspoon um, and that'll be enough to, uh, to bring that back up. Uh, it's gonna be different for your water. You're gonna to wanna to experiment with this as you can. 
Now once we've got our, our water treated and we're starting at what we consider to be our base level, we're going to use molasses as a food source for the bacteria that are in our compost. We start off, let's say, somewhere in the neighborhood of about a million bacteria in this, uh, in this sample. We feed it and aerate it over the next 12 hours, we're going to end up with a, a much higher multiple, right? The development of that bacteria, the bloom as we call it, um, is going to allow that bacteria to become more prolific, to increase in numbers, and it's going to benefit uh, when we apply this as a soil drench. So we actually use about two tablespoons, and because this stuff is exactly what the expression says, slow as molasses, we don't really use the measuring uh, devices for this. Um, when we do bigger batches, we'll actually use a full bottle um, and have multiple uh, buckets going at once. When we do just a single five gallon bucket, it's about two tablespoons. The next part of the process is to take ordinary cheesecloth. You can get this at the grocery store. You can buy it online. We want to create uh, a nice little satchel for this stuff. Okay, so we've got uh, probably about a cup and a half. And we could put more in. This particular piece of, uh, of cheesecloth is smaller than maybe we uh, would have liked under perfect conditions. Simply pull it up, use the zip tie to close that off. And the benefit of doing this is simply to keep it from pouring out inside the bucket. Um, later you'd have to uh, run this through some sort of a, uh, a sifting method um, using cheesecloth or maybe even uh, canvas. Um, but the idea here is uh, to try and keep as much of this in as, as possible so that we can just simply extract the bacteria and the fungi along with the nutrients. Um, a little knot here, we've got the ability to hang this on our bucket so that it's not tossing around the entire time. Keep in mind, this is going to be in the bucket for 24 hours. So we're extracting three primary components out of this compost. One are small organic particulates. Uh, the other would be a broad spectrum of nutrients, including uh, nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, uh, a lot of beneficial minerals and vitamins. And of course, the, the recipe is, uh, is dynamic. You know, what you feed your worms is gonna ultimately influence what you're able to pull out of this. Because we do primarily greens, uh, you know, stems of, of greens, root bases. Uh, what we end up with is a, a finished product that works really well on exactly what we're growing. Um, if we were to go a little bit heavier into um, more of the uh, paper, leaves, uh, heavier carbons, uh, that would be a little bit more beneficial for plants and shrubs or trees and shrubs. So we simply use this S-hook to drop this in. The third thing we're pulling out, as I said before, was the the bacteria. Um, we've put in the molasses to feed it. Um, it's already starting to leach some of its color. The next thing we're going to do is drop our aeration stones in. Uh, these stones are um, perfect for the job. They run off of a very small aeration pump. Uh, it'll have a delightful little hum for the next 24 hours here in the lab. Uh, those go at the bottom. I put one on each side. Um, it doesn't really matter how you position them. And then we're simply using this little aeration pump to create the bubbles. Now the bubbles are putting oxygen into the water. This buys us a little bit more time. If we were to just put that sachet of compost into the water and just let it sit there, it would go from aerobic to anaerobic in less than six to eight hours. But because we're giving it an oxygen supply, we can extend that out 24, maybe even 48 hours. Here in the Edible Learning Lab in Buffalo, we go 24 hours. We'll start a batch during the after-school session uh, around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 
and then we'll harvest it that next day, dilute it for our uses, usually a one to five dilution, uh, one part uh, tea, five parts water, and use it as a soil drench in the raised planters. Uh, normally when you finish this and the pump is still going, you'll see froth on the top, which is actually a good sign of, of biological activity. Um, and you won't really notice anything from you know, a smell or, or from sight that would indicate that there's anything but uh, a good tea here for you. Keep in mind that this is biologically active, it's alive. And every minute that passes, the value of that is going to degrade. Um, it's uh, typically best to use it within 24 hours. Uh, we use ours immediately. We're brewing it for 24 hours. We're using it probably within 30 minutes of hitting that 24 hour mark. Um, and not because we feel that 24 hours is, is the perfect mark, but we do you know this as two separate days in class. So our afternoon class goes, starts at four o'clock, we would start brewing that batch. That next day at four o'clock, we'd be harvesting it off to use it. In our uh, request from Bright Agrotech to have this Martha Stewart moment, we prepared a batch ahead of time. This is actually uh, the product of a batch that we started yesterday. Um, you can certainly see the difference in color, uh, much darker, richer color. Uh, there's no smell to it, it does smell earthy. The other thing we'll do is dilute on a five to one. Um, so we would be able to, out of this five gallon bucket, get about 25 gallons of diluted tea that we could use in our raised planters. And we simply apply it to the entire uh, footprint of the planter itself, not just where the plants are, but even in between, uh, and use that as a soil drench um, during our regularly scheduled, scheduled uh, waterings. I'd like to thank Bright Agrotech again for coming to the lab today, spending some time with us to explore compost, specifically vermiculture and the use of vermicastings uh, in the production of, uh, of worm tea. It's an invaluable resource uh, for your school garden, and if you want to learn more, check out the blog on Bright Agrotech. Or if you'd like to follow along with uh, our step-by-step -step instructions on how to actually brew compost tea, you can head over to modernstetter.com and check out the resource library for the Edible Learning Lab.